Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make Swedish meatball meatloaf. Ah, two of my favorite things, Swedish meatballs and meatloaf. All the flavors that we love. Plus, I'm going to show you how to get this meatloaf nice and moist. Y'all come on down here and let's put this one together. We're going to start with our meat. Now, I've got two pounds of ground chuck in here and also one pound of ground pork. That'll add some nice flavor. This is a doubled recipe because I want to make sure that we have some leftovers in the refrigerator and my husband loves meatloaf sandwiches. So we're going to make sure we have plenty in there for that. And with this hot weather, you want to make sure that you double up everything you make. <laughs> you stay out of the kitchen half the time. That's good news. All right, I'm just breaking it up a little bit. Now to this, we're going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. We're going to crack in two eggs. I'm going to make sure I don't have any shells going in. We're going to add in one cup of breadcrumbs. Now you want to make sure you're not using the Italian style breadcrumbs because that's just a whole other flavor that we don't want in there. Plus you can also use panko crumbs if you want to use those. So one cup. Now I'm just using a half cup measuring spoon. That way I can get into the box here. All right. Now. I have one whole onion that I've diced up. This will melt down into the meatloaf. We're going to add in one teaspoon of allspice. Now allspice is a berry. And this is ground up and it smells so delicious. It's going to add a nice flavor. We're going to add one teaspoon. We're going to add in one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of black pepper. All right, we're going to add mashed potatoes to our meatloaf mixture. Ever done that before? Now these are prepared mashed potatoes that you can get from your refrigerated section of your store. Pretty much where you can find your prepared items. And we usually find this next to the rotisserie chickens or the pulled pork that's already pre-cooked and sitting in the refrigerated section. So. I have a 32 ounce package here, and we're only going to use one cup of this. The rest of it we're going to heat up and doctor it up with some flavor once the meatloaf is done. That way we don't have to cook our mashed potatoes. But if you want to cook your own mashed potatoes, you can do that. You just need one cup. This will give the meatloaf some moistness and help keep it all together. Plus, who doesn't love mashed potatoes with Swedish meatballs? I know I do. I brought my kitchen friend over to help mix this. I don't want to mix all of this. It's too hot in the kitchen, so we're trying to cut out a lot of the steps, and this will help right here. So we're going to put in our paddle. There we go. And we're going to let it do all the work. <sighs> all right. There we go. As easy as that is. All right, I've got a sheet pan that I've lined with some foil. Now, make sure you're using a sheet pan that has a deep lip around it. That'll keep the grease and juices from running off into your oven. You don't want that. So I'm just gonna place it all right in the middle here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna be using my disposable gloves here to mix the meatloaf. All right, we're going to pack it good 
and we want to get an oval shape. We're free forming, that's what this is called. Push it in really tight, really tight. All right, now we're going to push it down just a little bit. Thinking we're looking at three inches from one end all the way to the other deep because we don't want this to fall apart. There we go. That looks great. I've got my oven preheating at 350 degrees. We're going to place the meatloaf in the oven and bake it for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes until it is cooked through. Now, you can certainly use a thermometer to give it a check and make sure that it is at least 165 degrees. And then we'll pull it out of the oven. We got that delicious gravy that we're going to make to pour over it. It's as easy as putting this one together. All right, my meatloaf just came out of the oven. We're going to rest it on the stove top while we make that delicious creamy gravy to go over it. Now, resting your meatloaf will help it pull itself together and cool down just a little bit. So we're going to start in a large skillet over medium high heat, and I'm going to add six tablespoons of butter. We're going to create a roux that's going to help thicken up our sauce. Right, we want to get that melting. Right, once the butter is melted, we're going to go ahead and add in six tablespoons of flour. I'm just using all purpose. We're going to combine this together and stir it around with a whisk for one minute. That will help cook out the flour taste from our roux. So just keep moving it around. All right, what we're going to do now is slowly start adding in four cups of beef broth. And blend in the flour and butter roux. And then just keep adding until it's nice and smooth. I'm going to put my burner onto a high heat so we can bring this to a boil. All right, I'm going to add the rest of it. I'm going to continue whisking, break up the roux into the beef broth. And then we're going to start flavoring this. All right, we're going to add in one teaspoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and you got it, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, there. All right, we're going to continue whisking until it comes to a boil. Give this a taste along the way and see if that's where you want your flavors. If you need to add a little more salt or some pepper, I am using the low sodium soy sauce. Mmm. Ooh. Now that's good. We want to reduce this down to get a thicker consistency. All right, we're going to turn the heat off. We're going to add in eight ounces of sour cream and blend that in. I'm going to dollop it around. I got a 16 ounce container here and I'm just going to use half of that. Let's blend this together. All right, make sure it's blended very well. I'm going to plate up our Swedish meatball meatloaf, give it some gravy, and I made something extra to enjoy with our meatloaf, so stick around for that. And sprinkle some parsley on top, give it a pop of color. What do y'all think? All right, we're going to pair up our Swedish meatball meatloaf and that delicious creamy gravy with some Brussels sprouts that I've smashed on a pan and cooked. This recipe is in my recipe blog, catherinesplates.com, smashed Brussels sprouts. And then we're also pairing it with the excess mashed potatoes that we had left in the store-bought mashed potatoes. All right, let me plate this up and give it a try for you. All right, there's my plate. Y'all want a plate? <laughs> oh, I'm going in right in that gravy. That's my bite right there. Mm. Oh, that meatloaf. It is so moist. Mm. It is so full of flavor. Those onions in there. Mm. That's so delicious. 
Try it with the pork. Adds another layer of flavor. Those mashed potatoes in there, just keep it all together. Make it nice and smooth. And that meatloaf, let me tell you what. I'm a big fan of Swedish meatballs. I grew up with them. I think I've made them when I was like eight years old, all the way up until now. But try it in the meatloaf form. It's delicious. And then don't forget that gravy. All right, you guys, give me a thumbs up on this one. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. All right, y'all comment down below. I'll see y'all on the next episode. Mm.